Little did I know when I woke up today that there would be a part two to this entire fiasco. And yet, for some reason, there is. So, in today's video, we talk about that base set first edition case going to be verified this weekend. What's likely to happen, what it means for the hobby, and my thoughts on the topic. But first, roll that intro. <laughs> Hey Gengar gang, what is going on? My name is Ryan, this is the Analytic Gengar, and welcome to another video. In today's video, friends, we talk about Logan Paul's Dewey's base set case that will be verified this upcoming weekend. Ooh. Now, uh, this is news that broke, uh, give or take, two days ago. Logan Paul literally just replied to a tweet or whatever this thing is called and said that he's going to be flying to oops he's going to be flying to chicago this weekend in an attempt to have the case verified with bbce the company who ensured its authenticity and uh yeah this is to be continued now what's actually going to happen well that's where this article comes into play but before we get started as always if you enjoyed today's video definitely feel free to leave a like and hey if you're not already subscribed to join the gengar gang it's that easiest way to support my YouTube channel and to help our happy little community keep growing. But without further ado, as always, the link will be down below in the video description. If you want to check out this Pokey Beach article for yourself, don't forget that there is a part one that technically occurred to this video. Um, I basically gave a little bit of a rundown earlier this week, so I'll leave that video down below and at the end of this video, as well as my most recent upload. So, moving on to the article itself. So, uh, Logan Paul is, yes, very clearly responding to the news that this purchase may be fake, and he's announced that he'll be verifying his first edition base set case this weekend. In case you've been living under a Pokemon rock for the past Pokemon, on week, Logan Paul bought a first edition base set case, and this is really impressive because it might be the only one in the world that remains sealed with, with its original tape around it. And the thing is, is that the baseball card exchange uh, authenticated it to be real, but the Pokemon community did a little bit of additional searching, looking, investigating, and what they found is that there are many different questions that get raised uh, against the claim that this box is 100% authentic. And and many of the claims are actually pretty valid, such as the barcodes not matching up random little quirks with the box, and even the history of the, of the case itself, which started out on eBay. Now, again, there's been tons of videos on that, so you can go check those out. You can go check mine out. I give a little bit of a tiny synopsis of everything. Fair warning, the original video uh, that broke the news on this is about a 40-minute video, so you can get analyses, you can get analyses of analyses, etc., etc. Now, as to the actual uh, box itself, it looks like what's going to happen is the baseball card exchange is going to, you know, authenticate the box again or re-authenticate the box again. This can mean one of two things. Either they will look at it, touch it, say, yep, that's the box we gave you, and then say, okay, it's authentic to the best of our knowledge or we guarantee it's authentic up to X amount of money. Or, as Pokey Beach notes here, this presumably means the box will be opened as it's the first step to determining if products like these are real. So, we don't know which of the two is going to happen, we don't know how documented this is going to be, and that's why a lot of people are clamoring about this news. Long story short, a lot of things can go wrong between now and then, and more importantly, a lot of things can go wrong even during the authentication. So, the article goes on to say that, you know, it's going to be difficult for the Pokemon hobby to believe any claims of authenticity. And realistically, it's going to require Logan Paul opening the box and then inviting experts to examine the box. Here's the thing. For a first edition base set booster box, there's actually quite a few different ways that it can be bootlegged, counterfeited, or resealed. And the genuine truth of the matter is, is that it's incredibly easy to do so in the grand scheme of things, especially if you're really good at counterfeiting cards. So, realistically speaking, resealing a case would only just be, you know, a level of effort above. Because what ends up happening is you just reseal six first edition boxes, and then reseal the case, and then magically you have a $3.5 million collectible item. And again, many people have pointed to the fact that there are some suspicious things going on with this case. Again, there are many theories as to what this case may hold. It might be a legitimate box of 
base set unlimited or base set shadowless boxes. This is a theory that's been floating out there. And effectively what happened is they just relabeled or re-stickered the box and then magically it becomes first edition. Obviously, as many of us know, first edition is worth 3.5 million. Base set unlimited or base set shadowless, while still worth a lot of money, is actually worth a lot less than what you would have paid for first edition, meaning you still make a big profit. And even though it's legitimate Pokemon card product, uh, you know, there's inherently a deception that's going on there that's increasing the price. So um, the article notes that historically, you know, any of these types of purchases require collective knowledge from the community's oldest collectors and even forensic analysis to determine certain things. And again, we have seen this play out in the past. In fact, I've even covered videos where the FBI has had to investigate um, individual collectors as well as PSA because of the counterfeiting that goes on, whether it be in the sports card hobby, the trading card hobby, etc, etc. And so while it sounds dramatic, not only does the collective community usually get involved with these types of instances, but also sometimes it requires forensic analysis and forensic expertise to really kind of determine some of the finer, more specific areas. Now, one one of the uh, stories that this article makes reference to is the, is the fake TCA box. In case you don't know, TCA Gaming had a base set first edition box. He was sold quite a while back. He ended up opening it because something looked amiss and he actually found out that it was in fact a resealed box of cards. Um, and you know, this was the slightest tiniest indentation under the shrink wrap that wasn't present on the shrink wrap itself that gave him an indication that there might be something wrong because presumably if you see a defect on the box, it should also be on the shrink wrap which lies on top of the box. So, uh, it's because of things like this, right? TCA is one of the OGs of this hobby. He certainly knows his first edition base set, and even he was fooled by a very good counterfeit. And so, the article notes that this is why it's going to require time, expertise, and knowledge, and I think it even goes beyond that. It doesn't require just one instance of each, it requires multiple instances of each. Oftentimes, when you want something like this, to be authenticated, it's probably going to require the expertise of multiple people with multiple amounts of time, experience, and knowledge in order to best give a consensus type of authentication. Basically, you know, 10 folks sit down in the room, they're all very respected collectors, they all provide individual, um, you know, recommendations. It might be 10 out of 10 say it's fake, 10 out of 10 say it's real, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, etc, etc. But something like that structure is usually what goes on, even even though those you know numbers or ratios are never publicized right so now the article goes on to note towards the back end of the article that you know fraud is increasing in the TCG market over the past years and this is primarily due to the fact that there is more money in this hobby than there has ever been wherever there's money counterfeits and fraud will follow because obviously it presents an opportunity to make an illicit dollar so to trick authenticators scammers assemble booster boxes using a mixture of legitimate packs and resealed ones underneath this is very common first edition base set boxes this sounds weird but can be weighed so there is an acceptable band of weight that those boxes should have in the olden days and i'm talking like 2010s right now early 2010s, by the way, one of the ways to authenticate a box was to weigh it because they used a very consistent cardstock, foiling, etc., etc. And so if you had a box within the weight, it was likely legit. And then if it was outside the weight, you might be able to discern that it was in fact resealed. Then, you know, some scammers got a little bit smarter or more intelligent. They ended up using the exact number of trading cards that would have been in a base set box then what they ended up doing was they ended up using shadowless or even base set unlimited or fossil or cheaper Watsy era hollows and putting in about 12 to 14 in the box so that again it could get as close to the weight as possible base base set also has a weird quirk where if you push down the perforation on the top of the box you can see the uh, packs that sit on the top of the stacks on both the left and the right side and so one of the most common gimmicks that counterfeiters will use is using real first edition base set wrappers to wrap up some cards and place them on just the very top however 
you'd be shocked to find out that when you open them, you might find stuff from, you know, back in the day, this was black and white and uh, the sun and moon era. Obviously, nowadays, they um, would never put black and white in there. You're probably going to get some chilling rain and some battle styles in there. But that's just the genuine truth of the matter. Obviously, because of the value of the first edition base set boxes, it's incredibly, incredibly easy to reseal them. And although there are many, many, many fakes out there that are very bad and very easy to see from a million miles away, there are some that are in fact quite good and can be quite deceiving, especially if you aren't looking at it long enough, if you aren't looking at it under the right light, if you aren't bringing a certain level of expertise or knowledge to the authentication process. And so the article wraps up saying, hey, you know, Paul purchased this un this unopened case for 3.5 million in December. The story made headlines because technically it's the largest Pokemon TCG purchase in history, but you know, the box raised several red flags, including multiple origin stories, a dubious seller, conflicting labels and concerns over its authentication process. Now, if I can briefly comment on one thing regarding this is that I worry about the authentication process, not only the first time, but also this re-authentication process that's going to happen. Um, BBCE or Baseball Card Exchange is not Pokemon Card Exchange. It's not Pokerev. It's not TCA. It's not Gary. It's not Leonhart. It's not someone who has any inkling of what a legitimate box would look like. And unfortunately, because of the price and the overall spotlight on this particular transaction, it's very likely that more and more counterfeiters will step up to make a more compelling fake. So it's not, you know, me going online and buying a $50 box and hey, yeah, maybe I get skipped, but what legitimate counterfeiter is going to put, you know, hundreds of dollars and hundreds of hours of time and expertise into counterfeiting something because it's literally 50 bucks. $3.5 million is a excellent reason to step up your counterfeiting game. So my whole argument is that because of the price of this, if it is a counterfeit, it's probably going to be a very good one. And again, the whole gimmick behind this box is that it is a sealed case of first edition base set cards, meaning no one in their right mind wants to open it just to, you know, open it because there's no reason to open it. Ideally, if we knew 100% guarantee that this box was le legitimate, the realistic truth of the matter is it would never be opened, ideally, because it's a one of a kind collectible. The thing is, is that opening it may be the only way of verifying that it is in fact a legitimate first edition base set booster case. And the truth of the matter is, is that doing that inherently ruins the sealed aspect of it. TCA had a pretty big um, video where he basically went over and said the exact same thing that I just said as he was opening a first edition base set booster box. And the reason he did that is because he legitimately had concerns over the authenticity of a box. Turns out that that box did end up being legit and I believe that box was then even sold to Logan Paul and that video was used as a referential material for the security sealing of that box once it had been opened, its contents verified, and then repacked, resealed, but in a way that it was completely traceable that no suspicious behavior or illegitimate activities had taken place once the contents of the box were verified, i.e. the security seal that protects the buyer of the box alongside the video. So the other thing is that although Baseball Card Exchange isn't a legitimate Pokemon authenticator, I just worry about what this authentication process is going to look like. Like I said at the beginning of this video, are they going to double tap the box and be like, yep, that's the box we gave you. We guarantee it's legit. And then if they are, are they going to be around to stand by a Pokemon collectible sometime in the future if should the box ever be found to be illegitimate. The genuine truth of the matter is, I don't know. And the genuine truth of the matter is, it would be a lot better if Logan Paul, in full transparency, opened the box up and then let a whole bunch of very skilled, qualified Pokemon people look at the box. I think at a minimum, Gary, TCA, Pokerev, and maybe G and Z, bring them in and let him look at it. Let Gary bring his opened booster case and compare the two. 
then you have four really, really strong names backing you in terms of, you know, what's going on, how it looks, how it's doing. And then more importantly, you have a very transparent process that makes sure that, yeah, this is a legitimate Pokemon card transaction purchase. And yeah, it was verified by some of the biggest collectors in the game. We've compared it against known examples. We know for a fact that it's real and legit. Period. End of story. Everyone can go about their day. I mentioned this in Tuesday's video, but because it's Logan Paul, it's always going to generate some sort of negative backlash, and I postulated in the last video that I believe more people cared about this because they almost wanted it to be fake because it's Logan Paul. Putting aside what I think about that, I do think that there's a real opportunity here for him to be proven wrong. And I noted that regardless of what happens, he is going to benefit from the fact that the community came together, did all this investigative work, and decided to opine in general on this particular uh, booster case. And then the other thing to bear in mind is that if it's true, and this is a real life actual uh, booster case, you know, there are many quirks that got called out that probably will force people to reevaluate what it is they were particularly looking at, how they were considering certain things. It'll basically change the way we think about first edition booster cases. Not that they come up every day, but you know, many, many, many different things were kind of weird about this box. And so if it does end up being real, it'll kind of make a lot of people scratch their heads. Um, I think the best way Logan can get, you know, get through this and guarantee the legitimacy and authenticity of his item is to open the case up on camera. I hope Pokerev and and G and Z and TCA are standing directly to the left of him. They look at it, they go through each of the boxes. They might even have to verify each of the boxes. And then once that's said and done, he's good. He has his sealed booster case no more, but he certainly has authenticated Pokemon merchandise um, that does substantiate the largest Pokemon transaction to date on record. But with all that said, friends, thanks again for checking out another video. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think Logan should open it up? Do you think they're going to do some kind of shifty business on the side and uh, say it's authenticated? Do you think there'll be other big names from the hobby there helping BBCE to authenticate this item? Or do you think something else is going to happen? But as always, if you like today's video, leave a like down below. Hey, if you're not already, subscribe to join the Gengar gang. And as always, friends, thank you for your viewership. Other than that, I hope you guys are having an amazing day, and we will talk soon. Peace.